whether you're new to SharePoint List or just looking to learn more about the advanced features. This video will show you how to create, customize, and use lists to track data, manage tasks, and collaborate with your team. My name is Alice Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, and let's jump right on in to SharePoint lists. We'll cover creating a new list, adding columns, and using views to help make your work all the more efficient. Let's start with the basics, how to create a list. So lists and SharePoints are similar to Excel tables, but they come with more powerful collaboration and data management features. So I'm here on a SharePoint site, a team site, and I have created this team site in one of my previous SharePoint videos. All of the SharePoint videos that I've done so far for the series will be linked below for you to easily access. On my team site, I'm gonna go ahead to new and we are gonna select list. Now, we can either get started with a blank list, we can work from an existing list, from Excel file or CSV file of existing data, or you got the option to pick from a template. So the templates will allow you to, right, you can see the different varieties, and if you're like, you know what, actually an expense tracker is exactly what I'm looking for, start with that, and then you can modify your list elements, so that way it's tracking all of the information you would like it to. But of course, those templates give you an easier and faster starting point. I'm gonna start with just a blank list. We'll start completely from scratch and build it together. Now, for my name, I'm gonna call this Project Tasks. capitalize that and with this right we are able to add a description if we would like in this example I'm gonna create a blank list for managing project tasks I'm naming it project tasks and once you click on create you will then be able to have this blank canvas to start building your list you also have the ability to decide for or against showing in site navigation so if I want this project task to show up over in my navigation to make it really easy for people to find, I can do that. If I don't want to do that, right, I want to, you know, give specific links to it, just make it a little bit not as obvious, I can decide to turn that off. I'm going to hit create now. And here is our blank list. So creating a list is simple, but the real power comes when you start adding and customizing columns to fit the data that you are tracking. So here we are on our blank list that we have created. We now have to decide, right, what data do we want to track? So if you want to think of this in Excel terms, right, how many columns of data are we keeping track of? And we would want to make sure we're essentially adding that column and putting in that properly named header so that way all of the data that we capture and gets added in will have those proper columns to track it and those headers to easily understand what's going on in our data, right? And we can decide if it's text, we can track dates, choices, even people that we would want to keep track of on this list. So we can add in columns right here, right? We have one existing title. Our blank list was created with just one column, but I can go over to add a column and then in this pop-up I can choose what type of data will I be tracking in this column again text choice date time multiple lines of text again there's that person number yes or no links currency location where you have such a variety of information so that way, no matter what information you're tracking in this list again think of a list similar to an Excel spreadsheet of data you are able to sort that and set your data typing properly. I'm going to choose choice. I'll go with next. And now let's go ahead with naming this. So I have the ability in this pane to name, description, the type is choice, and I can see the choices, right? Multiple choice that I am giving people to fill out, right? So I'm not letting them input blank I'm not letting them input their own response, type that out manually. Instead, I'm giving them the options to choose from and they can just select the one that works best for them. So let's call this one task status. 
And for my choices, I can just click on each one of those little bubbles to rename it. We'll call this one not started. Our next one is going to be in progress. And our third one, let's call this completed. So now, as I'm tracking the tasks for this project, each one of those tasks, I'll be able to update this status in this choice column. You also, if you wanna have different colors, let's say I want completed to be green, in a progress to be yellow, and then not started is let's say this like pinkish red, right? So I can easily see which one it is. I can do that as well. Let's hit save. And then I'm also gonna add a due date column and a priority column to further categorize and prioritize our tasks. So these customizations really help ensure that your team is seeing the information and tracking the information that's gonna be relevant to everyone. So we're gonna add a date and time column and this will be our due date. And we can decide again if we want to modify right if you get into it and you're like actually this should be a different column type i can decide if i want the time or not i personally don't need the time on here so we're going to leave that off but if you want to track the time as well as the date you can do that in here and we'll hit save and let's add one more column in this will be a priority column i'm going to use choice again we'll go with next and let's call this one priority we're going to choice column and our choices are going to be high medium and low that way i know right the task that i'm creating i can see its task status where it's at along with the day that it's due and then i can also see right what are my high priority items that i really need to get done right and of course you can color code these again to be more impactful if you want to have some differentiation there let's go ahead and hit save and we see those three new columns that we added, right? We're just building out the structure of the table, right? This list where we are going to track our data. By customizing your columns, you're making sure everyone on the team can easily update and they'll filter the data that they need. So now that we've set up our columns, let's add in some list items, right? This is where the real tracking comes, right? Once your list is created, you give everyone the link and say, hey, for your project task, make sure you're tracking every step of the process, filling in all of the details. Let's go with add new items, our blue button at the top of our navigation to add in a project task. And note, the fields I have are the fields, the columns we've just created. So for a task title, let's go ahead and for our new task, let's just say that our project is going to be meeting with a client. We can decide our task status, whether we've started, not started, in progress, completed. We can enter a due date and that gives us a calendar picker so we can decide right how far in advance is this due pick that actual day and then we can choose our priority on here we can also add in any attachments right so if we have maybe a word doc with details to it or a pdf an excel file right any of those items we would be able to attach so that way anyone else who is on this list looking at the project task, looking to see how things are doing, they would be able to get that additional information. Once we save, we will see that item appear, right? All of the columns that we are tracking now have data, right? And we could add in additional elements. Let's do this one, research. We'll give our task status, uh, let's say it's in progress. We can give that a due date, right? We can say this will be due by, let's say January 1st. And its priority is high, right? We wanna make sure we do that research prior to going to our meeting and we will save that step. 
And there we go. And so that is how easy it is to set up a list, add columns to your list to track all of the important vital information that's going to benefit your team and that you need to see, and then add new items to that list. That way they are able to easily track items, right? We're not putting this into a spreadsheet where it might get lost, deleted. It's very easy to navigate through and use and it's all stored right on the SharePoint site that they are collaborating and working together on related to items about this list. We can of course also now sort, just like with table, all of these columns, ascending, descending order, we can filter by and more. You can also set your structure of formatting your column, moving that around, narrowing, widening your columns, lots of modifications you can make for your list. So as your list grows and as more and more people are utilizing this list to track their information, you may want to start setting up views. Views allow you to display only the information that's relevant to you, whether it's filtering by status, due date, or priority. So when you go to, so on our list, we can go out to add view. We can name our view here. Let's just call this one manager view. I decide, you know what, I want this in a calendar view because that way I can see where these items are at based off of their due date on a calendar. So I can decide that my start date on the calendar, let's say it is the created date and the end date on the calendar is the due date. I can decide if I want this to be a private or a public view and let's hit create. And now notice my style, right? I have the ability to switch between my views. So I can see that I can go from the month, the week, the work week and the day because I'm in that calendar view of that manager view. I can also set this current view as the default. So if this is the view I want everyone to see versus more of our generic list structure, we can set this one as the default. I can also, of course, delete this view if it's no longer relevant and I'm no longer utilizing this item. Now I can continue to add views and definitely most people would like multiple views to really organize your data in different ways. Maybe one for high priority tasks, another for tasks due this week and so on, right? So that way you can easily go through and sort what type of data do I want to see? How do I want that data to be displayed? The order, the sorting, all of that. So that way it's really easy for your end team to go, go to the different views that are available to them to switch between there. Let's just say that this one will be team view. And we'll leave this one as a list and we'll hit create. And now we switched over to that view and I can now switch between, right, the style of auto fit, compact, or regular list, whatever I would like to see in this team view. Then I can also go to that manager view and just switch between my views right here in the top of my screen on the right side. Views are especially useful, right, when you're dealing with a large list or when different team members need to focus on different types of information. That was a quick introduction to a SharePoint list from creating and customizing your list to managing items and even creating views to make it really easy for your end user to see this list information in the way that works best for them. SharePoint lists are incredibly versatile and are great for your organization to track your data and keep your team aligned. Whether you're tracking tasks, managing inventory, or organizing projects, lists can help streamline your work. I have a whole site about SharePoint list on our on-demand learning platform if you want to dive in more. I will also link for you below the rest of the SharePoint videos that we have here on our Pragmatic Works YouTube channel so you can see them. Don't forget though to like this video so the next one that comes out will just pop right up on your page and also subscribe to our channel so you can see all of the videos that we have related to things in Microsoft land, not just SharePoint. And don't forget to comment below if there is one feature that you would like added to SharePoint list what would that be? Let me know. I look forward to seeing all of your responses.